Here's a tricky projectile problem that a friend of mine asked me to solve. At half of its maximum height, the speed of a projectile is three-fourths of its initial speed. What was its initial launch angle? Okay, we'll start by drawing a diagram. Let's imagine this object is launched at some initial speed v0. And so, of course, it moves in a parabolic path. It goes up, reaches some maximum height, and comes back down. And we're trying to find the angle of the launch. And what we know is that halfway up, so let's mark some point here, halfway up, it's moving at three-fourths of the initial speed. So uh, I usually, when I do problems like this, I usually call the initial point zero and then subsequent points along the path, I'll number one, two, three, and so on. So this will be point one, this will be point two. And so the speed at point one, we'll call V1, and the speed here at point two is moving directly to the right at point two, we'll call that V2. Now, I originally tried to solve this with the equations of constant acceleration. And, and it's not easy to solve it that way. And so I ended up bailing out and taking an approach using energy equations, and that turned out to be fairly easy. And that is often the case. Energy equations typically provide an alternate method of solving problems like this, and the solution with energy equations, in many cases, is substantially easier. So I'll solve this with energy equations here, and I'm going to start by writing down some things I know. I know right here the kinetic energy, and, and kinetic energy, remember, is 1 half mv squared. So right here at point 0, I'll call the kinetic energy Ke0, and it will be 1 half mv0 squared. And at point 1, the kinetic energy, Ke1, will be 1 half m times v1 squared. And then at point 2, the kinetic energy, which I will call Ke2, we 1 half m v2 squared. And then there's one thing I know, the key fact here, which is going to allow me to solve the problem, and that is that at half the maximum height, so at this point here, point 1, the speed is 3 fourths of the initial speed. So this speed right here, v1, is 3 fourths of v0. So let's write this that way. Let's write it as 1 half m, and then instead of v1, let's write 3 fourths of v0 squared. And 3 fourths squared is 9 sixteenths. So this is 1 half m times 9 sixteenths v0 squared. Okay, that's the kinetic energy at point 1. Now let's imagine the, the flight from point 0 to point 1. As it goes up, it gains potential energy and loses kinetic energy. So let's think about the kinetic energy lost from 0 to 1. From point 0 to point 1. Okay, the kinetic energy lost will just be the kinetic energy at the beginning minus the kinetic energy that it has left. So let's write that. That will be 1 half m v0 squared minus 1 half m times 9 sixteenths v0 squared. And we can factor out the 1 half m v0 squared right here. And so this just equals 1 half m v0 squared times 1 minus 9 sixteenths. And 1 minus 9 sixteenths, of course, is 7 sixteenths. So this is 1 half m v0 squared times 7 sixteenths. Okay, now think about this. This is key. The kinetic energy lost from 0 to 1 is 7 sixteenths of the original kinetic energy. So going from 0 to 1, it loses that much kinetic energy. Now look at this. Going from 0 to 1, that's going halfway up. Remember, point 1 is defined as half the maximum height. So if it loses that much, uh, that much kinetic energy going up from 0 to 1, it's got to lose that same amount of kinetic energy going up from 0 to 2. Remember, the kinetic energy lost is equal to the potential energy gained. So whatever 
whatever kinetic energy is lost in the first vertical half is going to equal the kinetic energy lost in the second half vertically. So twice that. So let's think about the kinetic energy lost from 0 to 2. Going from 0 to 2, it loses 14 sixteenths of the original kinetic energy. And 14 sixteenths, of course, is, is 7 eighths. So 7 eighths of the original kinetic energy is lost going from 0 to 2. Now think about that. Go, going from the bottom to the top, it loses 7 eighths of the original kinetic energy. That means the, the kinetic energy left has to be the remaining 1 eighth of the original kinetic energy. So Ke2 here has to be 1 eighth of Ke0. So I'm going to take this fact and rewrite it down here where I have a little bit more room. Okay, I know that Ke2, 1 half m v2 squared, is 1 eighth of the original kinetic energy, which is 1 half m v0 squared. And then we can cancel the m's and cancel the one halves and we're left with this v2 squared is 1 8 v0 squared and then let's take the let's take the square root of both sides v2 is 1 over the square root of 8 times v0 Okay, so now we have a relationship between V2 and V0. Now we can use this to draw a little diagram. Okay, let's imagine V0, remember V0 is the original launch at angle theta, and theta is what we're looking for. So this is V0, and V2 is the horizontal component of that. Remember, V2 is the velocity right at the peak. So the horizontal component right here, if we draw a line straight down, this this length right here of this vector has to be 1 over the square root of 8 times this. So let's write that here. 1 over the square root of 8 times v0. And now we have a right triangle here and you can see in the right triangle that the cosine of theta has to be this over that. So the cosine of theta is going to be 1 over the square root of 8 v0 over v0. And of course those v0's cancel. So cosine of theta is 1 over the square root of 8. And then we can find theta. Theta is just the inverse cosine of 1 over the square root of 8. And you do that on the calculator and it comes out to about 69.3 degrees. And the problem is solved, and that is pretty cool.